Wow. I hate to disturb them. Good morning. They'll be ready to fly off to their daytime rendezvous. Anyway, they do every morning. How beautiful. On their southern migration. They would have left shortly. They do every morning. And I thought I'd get it on video one time. So I can watch it when the winter winds blow <laughs> during that worst time of the year for me. It's true though that there is some beauty in winter. A lot really. I can recall as I look back reading many beautiful, wonderful inspirational books during the winter time those were years past in a less complicated life still occasionally I I do get a chance to, to read a novel here and there one uh, one particularly I I think of that I found a copy when I was a young man. I don't know why I'm I don't know why I'm rambling this for no reason. Maybe because I haven't had my coffee yet. Or because maybe I have a little anxiety at the approach of winter. Or because genuinely I'm trying to find some measure of solace in the idea of winter approaching rapidly and here we are just a few days away from Thanksgiving but I might as well continue since I started there might be a few of you out there that are novelists or people that love reading novels books I think if I had to reach back and maybe point to one book maybe that was most inspirational in me as an individual as it relates to my gardening and growing figs and fruits and persimmons and berries and all kinds of things. And in my general attitude about nature, <clears throat> and I've long regarded myself as a conservationist, in fact, way back then, Many, 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 many decades ago, I, I can remember in my senior year of high school, <laughs> and trust me, it was a long time ago, I can remember that there was a, a teacher that, well, we had to select our term topics, term paper topics. And I looked at the, I reviewed the list, and in there was this word conservation. It was conservation and reclamation. And I, I asked the teacher, I said, what, what is this? Would you believe that back then, and we're talking a long time ago, the word pollution, I mean, you never heard it. Nobody talked about it. Honestly, it wasn't a household name or word. It just wasn't. And so the teacher told me, well, it's about an attitude, about taking an approach to your own particular lifestyle and wanting to, as a result of that, to conserve on natural resources 
and and not to pollute and that was like the first time i heard that word not to pollute the oceans and the air and the and the groundwater conservation and conserve things conserve everything that's finite because in our world in this paradigm that we live in things are finite they're not infinite that's another concept that i would love to discuss in great detail but and it's an interesting debate you know is the entire universe is it a finite thing is it an infinite thing you know i, I don't want to get into these concepts uh, for a good reason for good reason but one thing for sure and it's indisputable and it's incontrovertible and that is that resources on this planet are finite they are finite meaning they have a limit i remember when i was a teacher i used to talk to my students and i used to tell them i used to say you know think of it this way if you want to try to conceptualize what finite means think of that you, you, you look you see a beautiful red apple and you take a bite out of it oh that's okay there's still plenty left but then you take another bite and another bite and another bite guess what it's finite because in a little while it's going to be gone there isn't any more bites it's over with it's done and so that was how I tried to get my students to conceptualize finiteness. And when I spoke of conservation, that was the principle I espoused, that we, we, we should try as humanity, as, as a civilization, to conserve our resources, which include the air, the ocean, the, everything, the, the water. And getting back to the novel, and on that particular line of thinking that I would recommend, and that was perhaps most inspirational to me, I remember a book, and it's called Nature's Serial Story. And I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, prepare. <laughs> I never do with my videos. And so I don't have the author of that name, of that book. But it, it's a book that I've held close to my heart. I don't worry about authors too much anyway. For my entire lifetime, I still have the book. And it was written in 1898. And how I found that book is an extraordinary story, which I don't have time to talk about. But maybe if if some people are curious i might i might mention it again and tell the story about how i came across that book because it's it's very eerie it's a strange uh encounter <laughs> you might say in the way that uh, the way i i first maintained uh, possession of that book nature's serial story extraordinary extraordinary book written in a time before the telephone and before radio and TV and all that. And even automobiles. And the author was a genius in his knowledge of nature and in that book, I realized just how far apart we as a civilization, as a people, are away from nature. How, how really separated we've become from the natural world. And it is true. It is so true that that's the case. And that book, I think, pointed out to me more than any other that I've ever read just how detached we've become from the natural world and what the negative effects from that are. Okay, well, I might talk a little here about 
the fig trees. My last video talked about extracting the in-ground trees that, that were in grow bags, my grow bag method, I call it. And I'll take a walk over here and show you the extraction. But, but these are getting ready for storage now. They're ready. They're all ready. And it's almost Thanksgiving. And as I mentioned before, Thanksgiving is a very good time to begin to store away your fig trees to protect them from winter and damage and the, the video I made last about extracting the trees the in-ground trees that are in grow bags and I talked about all the advantages of the reason why I do this and here's the trees and you can see I extracted them and with the tool that I demonstrate in the other video. And I, I, I strongly advocate this method for a few fig trees. I, I mean, it's easy to do. You can see how easy I just pluck them right out. And you'll see the method in the other video. So look, look at that video. You see the tool and you can make the tool. You can make a tool of your own. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's so easy to do. And you pound it down and you chop the roots and when you chop the roots you just extract the tree you grab the handles and you pull it up use a shovel one time down in there and lift it and just it pops right out and then you just grab the handles and up it comes a nice clean job so simple now you put these trees in winter storage and next year next spring i'll get them out for an early start Put them up against the sunny side of the house or put them in the greenhouse or any place just to give them a little bit of an early start they've been protected all winter long in my fig isolation room or my fig cellar that i my it's a root cellar which i've shown in the back and put them back in the holes or move them around i, I often move them around in different locations Sometimes I fill these holes with dirt and I, I might not grow them. I will grow something here though, probably these trees because they're producing abundance of figs for me. Okay, and an abundance of Breva that I talked about in the last, in the last video too. There's a lot of Breva on here that are going to now be preserved because I'm extracting these trees. Look at the Breva, if you will. This tree is loaded with Breba, and I'm going to be, look at them all, look at them, and I'm going to be saving all those, by extracting these trees, and remember, these trees produce an abundance of figs, one of the reasons is when you confine and constrict the roots, which the grow bags tend to do, of course, even with the holes for letting the roots out into the nutrients of the surrounding soil, you're going to get that increase in the number of fig production that is so nice about growing fig trees in containers. Containers produce a lot of figs because the roots are constrained. No one really understands why that's the case with figs, but it is the case with figs. But here you have the best of both worlds. And I talk all about that in my previous video how they're secure from the wind, they don't blow down, uh, they don't need as much water in the ground. You get far more fig production because of the, const the constriction of the roots. You, of course, protect your trees for the winter time. I, I keep talking about this. This is a good method. This method has produced countless figs for me. And I, I really am trying to persuade you. And for no other reason, I have no personal motives, for no other reason than I want you to be a successful fixture. And you can pick out a few varieties. This one's Laterula, Italian honey fig. And this one's the Smith, which is an absolutely incredible fig tree, a fig variety. And it's one of my very, very favorites altogether. Take a quick walk over here and 
Hey, what's up? And uh, here's another one I just extracted, which isn't in the last video. Very easy. But I just drove my tool down and cut the roots and popped it up. And there it is. That's Sultane. And I'll be putting this in winter storage and protecting it and the Breba as well. So, thank you for your visit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, there's quite a few ripe, ripe persimmons here. Ooh. I'm going to be picking some of these and bring them in. I'm going to start dehydrating now soon too yeah oh yeah they're beautiful i demonstrated uh i ate a ripe a, a delicious ripe one in the last video but these are all these are all pretty much ready to be eaten now and so i'm going to have to pick here comes the work i'm going to have to pick quite a few of these and start dehydrating them and getting them ready for putting in the freezer which i do every year and I talked about that, too, several times in other videos. Aren't they beautiful? Okay. Good day.